the the thing about the Los Angeles trip was most, most um, intriguing to me. I guess morning to you, Sister Barbara, was that we, um, morning to you, Sister Nancy, we uh, left here uh, kind of cold weather. Good morning to you, Sister Serena. So we have, we assumed that in Los Angeles, we we're going to have 80, you know, 90, 70, at least degree weather. You know, we saw it on the, on the weather channel, weather forecast. And when we got there, you believe the weather was like, you know, 50s, 60s. Um, I, it did not touch 70 at all. But you know what? Back here at home, we heard that the weather was in the 70s and, you know, great weather. You had sunshine, except it rained a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. We uh, we bless you uh, for all that it is that is happening. And we just praise God for what it is that he's going to be doing. Yes, Sister Nicole, we're going to be talking about him this morning. So one another thing that happened while we were away, um, we the, Tobias fell sick. He fell ill. So we went with a family trip. So Tobias fell ill. I tell you, if you want to go somewhere and get some rest, don't take teenagers with you. <laughs> Don't take too many teenagers with you, Gorgie, Sister Nora, because they don't want to rest no matter where they are. But uh, Tobias fell ill, so he got a little sick. And we we immediately thought, because of the symptoms that he had, we thought that he had corona. So we said, oh, my goodness, we have to ride back in the car with him. You know, we, we put our masks on. Uh, even though my husband and I had been uh, vaccinated um, twice um, and we had, um, yes, 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 yes. We're praying for your son, uh, Soror. Um, even though my husband and I had been vaccinated, we had, we had been totally vaccinated. Uh, my daughter had not. And so we were a little um, concerned that Tobias' symptoms were pointing to he had corona. And so um, we, you know, he laid around in the bed for, you know, like a day and a half and was just really not feeling well, sore throat and those sorts of things. And so we get back home and, you know, so that was Saturday. So yesterday was Sunday. We got him a test and um, we, um, it was, it was interesting because we could, it was difficulty getting the test and um, we finally were able to get him the test. And so after we were able to get him the test, they, they told me they would call him, you know, in an you know, hour or so or whatever it was. And, um, and so we waited and we waited and we waited and we waited and um, he waited and waited. And finally they did call and let him know that. Um, he did not have corona, so he, he just had some kind of flu bug or virus or something, and so he didn't have corona. But but when he um, got the results back from the, um, the the nurse, the clinician, he said to to my husband and I, he said, "Y'all didn't know what he said, but when I was in the in that parking lot, he said I was praying, because I was praying to God." that I did not have corona. He said, I didn't want, you know, I didn't want the coronavirus. He said, but I was praying to God that I did not have it. And he said, so I knew that I didn't have it. I knew, you know, that, that that was not going to happen to me. And so we just blessed God for him because he felt that he had victory. He had victory because of the word that God has spoken to him because of what he had prayed. Because he recognized that prayer changes things. Prayer fixes things. So no matter what situation you are in, you got you got the victory. All you need is a word from God. All you need to know that you're victorious is that you believe the promises of God. No matter what the circumstances looked like, no matter what the symptoms were. And that's kind of what we were saying. There were symptoms and um, it just seemed like he was, that was it. And so again, we we took the precautions that we we needed to take. But I want you to know this morning that it doesn't matter, Soror, what the odds are. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter, my God, if the cancer comes back. It doesn't matter, come on, if if it doesn't matter if the, the, the A1C levels are high. It doesn't matter because God's ability to help us is not affected by our circumstances. God's ability to do what it is that he wants to do, that he needs to do in our lives. They're not affected by our circumstances. We recognize, oh my God, in John 10, 10, the Bible says that the enemy, the thief, the thief comes except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But the Bible says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And this is Jesus talking when he's saying that I've come. He said, no matter what is happening in your life, no matter what it seems like is going on, no matter if you feel like you're down and they, they, they put you down for the last time. The Lord is speaking to all of us this morning. Yes, in this wee hour of the morning, no matter what time it is that, that you're watching today, the Lord is speaking and he is saying to us, my God, that I've come to, to do away with the 
threats of the enemy. I've come to do away with the pain of the enemy. I've come to do away, my God, with the ills of the enemy. And you got to know that you have the victory in me. There are many Bible, many promises that are in the Bible. Good morning to you, Sister Miller. Many promises in the Bible, my God. It talks about what God is going to do for us. And we recognize that the Lord says, listen, I'm not the man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should ever have to repent. So we've got to recognize, my God, that whatever God says he's going to do, that's exactly what he is going to do. And so we got to recognize, my God, that, that, that we are not fighting to get our victory. We already have it. We already have the victory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Rose. We already have the victory. Sister Cecilia, so good to see you this morning. So good to see all of you this morning. We have the victory because of what Jesus has already done for us. And you can give God praise. You can thank him. Listen, I know it looks bad. I know it looks grim. I know, listen, Tobias thought, well, he didn't think it. Maybe we thought it. We thought that he was, maybe had the virus. And, and Tobias said, no, I prayed. He said, y'all didn't know it. He said, oh, he said, you didn't know what I was doing while I had my head bowed down. You didn't know what I was doing. You thought I was on my phone. You thought, my God, you thought that because I had the earplugs on, maybe I was talking to somebody else. But what are you saying? You, I was talking to God. And we have to recognize, listen, that we have to trust God, trust Jesus throughout the, and live in the victory that we are in. I said, we're not trying to get to victory. We have victory. Oh, my God, we have it. And we've got to trust my God that we can live in victory and not live in defeat. And I know, listen, I know, recognize, I recognize my God that even all the time, good morning to you, Sister Carol, all the time we are, uh, um, uh, that things are coming in on us uh, on, from all sides. Y'all recognize that? They come from all sides. And the thing about that is, is that that's just the enemy trying to get you off focus. The enemy trying to get you off track. The enemy is trying to steer you away. Oh my God, from what God is doing in your life. Good morning to you, Sister Mary. But I want you to know that the Lord has never stopped working in your favor. The Lord has never stopped working on your behalf. The Lord has never stopped working behind the scenes to show you the favor, my God, that he wants to show you. Good morning to you, Sister Sherilyn. But, the, but just as hard at work as the Lord is, come on in here, somebody. The accuser, the enemy, the devil, the bells above. He is working just as hard, trying anything and everything he can to get you off focus. Anything and everything that you can. To get you out of the clutches of the Lord. And then get you on his side. Oh, but I told you. Because why? That's his job. He came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I thank God. I thank God that we got the best in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can hear him singing the song. You got the best in me. We've got the best in him. And his reign, his abundance, his prosperity, his peace is raining down on our lives. Come on, just like, come on, we was in California, but you all were here in Indiana, and it was raining. And they said it was raining day after day. It was just like that. The Lord's peace, the Lord's abundance, the Lord's favor, the Lord's prosperity. Come on, the, it will rain on you. His salvation will rain on you. My God. Because the Lord came so that you would have life more abundantly. I think about even vacation time and how vacation time, you kind of throw, you throw caution to the wind. You just kind of do some things. My God. And on vacation times, you don't worry about anything. You're not worried about school. You're not worried about the job. You're not worried about what's going on back at home. Though, listen, when you're on vacation, come on, your mind kind of goes free and it roams free like you don't have a care in the world. That Come on. We can't live like we're on vacation all the time, but sometimes you can. It's from a spiritual aspect. When you begin my God, to trust the Lord for everything that he can, he can do for you because the Bible says he wants you to live an abundant life. He don't want you to live a, a life of worry. He don't want you to live, Sister Lisa, a life of anxiety. He said, I came that you would have life and not only would you be able to live, not only would you be able to survive. He says, I came that you would be able to thrive, my God, on this earth. He said, my God, because I want you to know, my God, that even though I can hear the Lord say, even though you got an enemy, even though you got an adversary, even though you've got somebody trying to come work against me, I want you to know, my God, that I've got you covered. I've got you covered. 
remember in Matthew, my God, chapter four, verse number three, when the enemy came to the Lord, he says, if you are the son of God, command that these stones turn to bread. Oh my God, it's like the devil is always trying to get you, come on, to do something, to show him something. But don't you know, just like the Lord, you don't have to prove anything to the enemy. You don't have to prove, my God, that you are a child of God. You just are because the Lord has accepted you into his family. He's accepted you, my God. You have been adopted, my God, in the family of God. And I want you to know that just like you, the Lord didn't have to prove anything either. And why is that? Because he proved it all on the cross. And that's why... You don't have to get to victory. You are already at victory. That's why it only takes a word, my God, from the Lord, my God, to let you know that victory is already yours. And just like my God, just like what the, what, what the Lord told to the devil, come on, in Matthew, Matthew uh, 4, I'm just going there for a minute because, because the Lord has said to Satan, he had to, re, he had to respond to Satan. And he said, listen, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds seed out of the mouth of God. But you know what? As, as, I, as I have taught this message before, the thing about the enemy is that he doesn't stop. He keeps on going. But I want you to know that no matter how many times the enemy might try to attack you, no matter how many times the enemy might try to tempt you, no matter how many times the enemy might try to move you from the position that God has you in, in order, my God, that the rain may fall on you, don't you know that you still got the victory? You still have the victory. Because listen, this is what Jesus had to do to Satan. He had to remind Satan, my God, who he was. He had to remind Satan, my God, he didn't listen. He didn't have to prove anything. He didn't have to throw himself down on the rocks. He didn't have to jump off the off the mountain. He didn't have to turn the stones into bread. Come on here, somebody. He didn't have to. He didn't have to prove anything to the enemy. But what did the Lord say? He said, "Listen, you got to get behind me." He said, "I got the victory. You got to get behind me." And sometimes, people of God, we got to do this. Sometimes we know. Listen, we feel like we feel like the enemy might have the upper hand, and sometimes the enemy might think he has the upper hand on us, but we got to know my God and recognize that Jesus already, my God, gave us the victory. He gave us the victory when he overcame the cross. He gave us the victory, my God, when he was successful over death and hell. He gave us the victory. And the thing about the enemy is the enemy knows that. He knows, he knows what you have access to. The enemy knows, my God, he knows that you have a relationship with God. You have a relationship with Jesus as Father. He knows everything you are entitled to as a result of Jesus dying on the cross. Good morning, people of God, because you've got the victory. Oh, you've got the victory. This is the thing about, the old apostle talked about it on yesterday. He talked about the omnipotence of God. The all power of God. He talked about the omnipresence of God. He talks about God being everywhere. At the same time, he talked about the omniscience of God. God knowing everything that's going on in your life. Come on, you have access to all of that. And that's the thing, my God, that the enemy knows. The enemy knows the power of God. The enemy knows, my God, the presence of God. The enemy knows, my God, that what God is capable of, but you got to know it. You got to understand it, my God. You got to know that you have access to the power, to the presence, to the knowledge, to the information that God has for you. Good morning to you. You got to know it. There is a story in the, in the, in the word of God. Found in 1 Samuel 27, 28. And this is the story that the enemy was trying to steal from David. And sometimes we fall into the same category, Sister Ruby. Yeah, you got the victory. 1 Samuel 2 and 27, this is from the Message Bible. David said to himself, sooner or later, Saul's going to get me. <laughs> How many times have you thought that you're thinking you've done something that's so wrong or so, so bad? That, that, that it's going to end up that the enemy is going to take overtake you. You're not going to be able to overcome the things, my God, that the enemy is trying to do in your life. And David said, the best thing I can do is, is escape. The best thing I can do is get to the Philistine country. It says, Saul will count me a lost cause. David says, Saul's going to stop hunting me down. He says, he's going to stop looking in every nook and cranny in Israel because he said, I'll be out of reach. This is what David was saying about Saul. 
Bible says David left, he and his 600 men, and they went to Achish, son of Maok, and king of Gath. They moved in and settled down in Gath. Each man brought his house, household. Listen, David said, we all going to flee. All, listen to me, somebody. David took everybody with him, his household, all of his, his men. David brought his two wives and Abigail, the widow of Nabal. He brought Ahinamon. And then when Saul was told that David had escaped to Gath, he called off the hunt. David thought he was off the hook. And one way the devil kind of tried to steal from us is to, is to um, put fear in our life. He tries to steal by, by giving us fear. Yeah, we were a little anxious about what was going on with Tobias, but the devil tries to put fear in your heart. David said, I may as well flee. Paul, Saul's going to get me, so I may as well flee. And the thing about fear is that fear, Sister Kathleen, has stolen so much from people, so much from the people of God. Fear, my God, causes you to, to, to first of all, stay stagnant. Fear of you causes you not to pursue the dream that God has for you. Fear causes you not to accomplish the missions that God has set your hands to do. Fear, my God, will cause you to flee to a place where God didn't tell you to go. Fear will cause you to miss the opportunities that God has for you. The enemy knows that when he get, he, his job is to kill and steal and to destroy. So he wants to instill fear in the people of God. The people of God, I've been, I've, I bless you this morning. Because the Lord is saying that God has not given you the spirit of fear. But he's given you power. He's given you love. And he's given a sound mind. And here we find, my God, that, that David left. Fear caused David to, to go to the land of Philistines. They didn't like David. Y'all know they didn't. David, why is that? They didn't like David. They respected him. Because remember when David was a lad, David killed Goliath. You all remember that. So the, the, the Philistines didn't particularly care for David. But it caused David to run into the enemy's camp, into enemy territory. Oh, my God. Yeah. So they, the, the, the king there accepted David. Good morning to you, Brother Dwayne. He accepted him not because he liked him, not because he loved him or he wanted to protect him. My God. But he knew, my God, that David might have to fight. Might have to fight and he was afraid. Fear again caused the king to accept David into his city. Well, he gave David Ziglag a place to live. He gave him Ziglag. Yeah. Y'all remember Ziglag. So David thought, okay, I'm I'm free. I'm 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 you know, I'm done. Done running from Saul. Done running from Saul. But the thing what happened, something turned. Something turned. We got to recognize when God has a plan for our lives, you can't run from it. <laughs> I know somebody, God has a plan for your life. You've been running from it for so long. And I want you to know this morning, listen, you have the victory. Stop running from the plan that God has for you. David knew that he was going to be king. David, David knew that he would be king. David had had so many victories over the over the time. He had fought, he won, he lost. Come on. David had done some mighty and powerful things in his life. Yeah. Yeah. So we think about, my God, come on, you gotta come on. I see you, Sister Reese. Stop running. Because when you run, my God, you, you still don't get out of, you may get out of the clutches of Saul. But you cannot run from the place that God has for you. Oh, my God. I know sometimes we can recognize that our strength is in God. And when we move from that place, we don't have strength. Was that anybody? You know that your strength is in God. And sometimes you feel like you go from in one place to another place. Your strength is not there. You recognize, I can't do this thing by myself. But then you remember God. You remember God. Say, God, you brought me. Listen, like David. David, you, you helped me. God, you, we killed the lion and the bear. God, we got rid of Goliath. We, God, what is it? Why am I running now? Why? Right, come on. Somebody say, victory is mine. The Lord gave you the victory. You say, why am I running now? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 
Three days later, David and his men arrived back in Ziklag. Oh, they went away, people. When they came back, Ziklag was burned down. It was torn to pieces. Their women were gone. The children were gone. They didn't kill anybody, but they took them. They captured them all. And, and by the time that David and them entered back into Ziklag, ah, the city was burned to the ground. The wives, the sons, all the daughters, everybody had been taken. David thought he was, you know, sometimes the saying, the saying is, you get out of the frying pan and into the fire. <laughs> David thought he was running from Saul. But look what happened. The city that was given to them was burned down. Their families were taken. Their children were taken. Their wives were taken. The thing about this is, listen, the people that were with David, there's men. Y'all know this story. David and his men, they cried. The Bible says they wept. They couldn't weep no more. They wept. Now the big mighty men, the big men in battle, they wept because their children were taken. Their wives were taken. And as a matter of fact, my God, I, I say, listen, out of the frying pan into the fire. Now, not only is Dave, David running from Saul and, you know, running from the people, my God, that may have come and, and, and destroyed their city. Now the men that were with David, they're turning on him. They're turning against him. So listen, David may as well have stayed and, and just dealt with Saul because now he's got all of the men calling on, listen, we're going we're gonna to stone David. We're going to kill David. They would begin to call on God. Ah, somebody say victory is mine. They begin to call on God. Yes, he did. He called on God because he knew, my God, that God was able to get him out of this situation. He called on God because he needed favor. He called on God because he needed the ability to get out of this situation just like God had delivered him many times before. God's delivered you many times before. Why are you running out of the frying pan and into the fire? Yeah, right then and there. David had to recognize, listen, that victory is mine. David had to recognize that whatever is going on right now, he said, this is not my destiny. They, listen, this is not my destiny. Some place that you are in right now, you've got to realize and recognize that that is not your destiny. That's not where God has you. That's not the plan that God has for your life. Ah. The Bible says that David had to strengthen himself. Some translations say David had to encourage himself. And why was that? Because all of those around him wanted to kill him. Yes, God. Yes. And David prayed to God. He says, should I go after them? Should I, can I get them? Will I be able to be victorious? And the Lord says, yes. Go get them. Go after them. Go rescue your family. Rescue the families of those that are with you. That was the word that came from God. The word that came from the Lord to David was, when you pursue them, you will be victorious. You don't have to worry about it. You ain't got to think about it. You don't got to listen to the devil about it. All you need is a word from God to know, my God, that victory belongs to you. It didn't matter what it looks like. It didn't matter. Listen, even with David, it didn't matter, my God, that they had come and destroyed their city. It didn't matter, my God, that, that he didn't know what was going on with their wives and their children. It doesn't matter. Because God is still powerful. He's all powerful. And it doesn't matter. This is sometimes the Lord will like, will, he loves it when the situation is bad. So we can't take any credit for when it happens. He loves it when it gets dire. So that when he brings you out, when he gives you the victory, no man, no woman will be able to take credit for what God is doing. Oh my God, glory to God in this place. When I look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, the Bible says that when he brought them down there, they were spread all over the land. The people, they were eating and drinking and dancing because of what they had done at Ziklag, because of what they had done to David's camp, David's family, David's men's family. Of all the spoils they had taken, my God, from the land of the Philistines and from the, and from the land of Judah. And David attacked them, the Bible says, and 
attack them from twilight until the evening of the next day. He says, nobody, not a man escaped. My God. The Bible says except there were 400 young men who rode on camels and fled, but David recovered all. Somebody say he recovered all. In the dire situations, no matter what it looks like, people, you have the victory. And even when it seems like the enemy has the upper hand, even when it seems like he's coming to kill and to steal and to destroy, I want you to know that one word from the Lord will allow you to recover all. My God, the Bible says David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken away from them. He, he rescued his two wives and there was nothing lacking, nothing. David recovered all. The Bible repeats itself and wants you to know that there was nothing, my God, that was left that the Amalekites had taken. Nothing, my God, of theirs. Nothing was lacking. He recovered all that had been lost, all that had been stolen, all that had been taken. He had recovered all of it. As a matter of fact, my God, God had given him more than had been taken from him in the first place. God had given them more than that. Because there was great spoil that, my God. And I want you to know, as I said earlier, God doesn't just want you to live. I said it in John 10, 10. He don't want you just to have life. But Sister Mary, he wants you to have life more abundantly. He wants you to have an abundant life, my God. He wants you to have a life full of plenty. He wants you to have a life, my God, that you have enough to share. I said it like pressed down, shaking together and running over. He don't want you to have barely enough. He doesn't have, he want you to have just enough to get by. Oh, that's not abundant. Oh my God, abundant life is overflowing. He wants you to have enough that's plenty over the top. He wants you to have enough that's flowing over. Oh my God. And you can have all that God, my God has called for you to have. The Lord is generous toward his people, generous toward his children. And it just takes one word. But you've got to remember to call on the name of God because that's the thing the devil forgot. The devil forgot how powerful God was. The devil forgot, my God, how gracious God was. The devil forgot how faithful the Lord is. The devil forgot. Oh, my God, my God. He forgot. But I want you to know this morning that everything you need for victory, everything you need for every situation you're going through, everything you need, my God, to, to remove the pains of the enemy, it was done for you at the cross at Calvary. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this, the sting of the death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, hey, glory to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, God, for giving us the victory. Oh, yes, God, it just takes one word. So you can always say, no matter what's happening in my life, you can trust God to know that victory belongs to you. When you put your faith and when your belief in God, you know that victory is yours. And just like God told Satan, get behind me, you can say the same thing because you can recognize that victory is yours. You can recognize that healing is yours. My God, prosperity is yours. Wealth is yours. You can recognize, my God, that great health is yours. Jo Listen, you can recognize no matter how much the enemy tries to discourage you, no matter how much he tries to, like, to bring you in fear, you got to recognize that joy is yours. You got to recognize, my God, that happiness is yours because victory belongs to you. You got to recognize, my God, that peace is yours. The Bible says, I will give you peace. That surpasses all understanding. You got to know that that is yours because you belong to the most high God. And there is nothing that no devil in hell can do to take that away from you. Victory belongs to you. Father God, I thank you for the victory now, God. I thank you, Lord God, for victory, God, over our lives. God, I thank you, God, for victory, my God, in our families' lives. I thank you for victory in our homes, oh God. Victory, Lord God, on our jobs. Victory as we walk down the street, oh God. Victory, my God, as we meditate on the word of God day and night. For the Bible says that we shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, God, whose leaf does not wither, but everything, God, we do 
is going to prosper, Lord God. Victory, my God, as we prosper in the things of you, God. Victory, Lord God, my God, in the marriages, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that even though the enemy, God, tries to separate husbands from wives, God, tries to separate, my God, that union, God, that you have ordained. I want you to know this morning, God, I thank you for the victory, God, in our marriages, victory, my God, among our children, God, our brothers, our sisters, our, my God, I thank you, God, for victory in our churches, oh God, as my God, Lord, you bring the people back to the houses of God. Bring them back, oh God, where they, my God, can receive a word from you, where they can receive life, oh God. Will you bring them back? We have victory, God, in our churches. My God, because Lord, that is the place you have established where your name is, God. And Lord, there's victory in your name. There's victory in Jesus. Because the Bible says that all we've got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Because at that name, the Bible says, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus, you are Lord. And not only that, oh God, because the enemy knows it too. At the name of Jesus, my God, the demons have got to go. They got to flee. At the name, you have the victory. I bless you, oh God, for the victory that you've given to us. Just by the very virtue of that name, Jesus. And Lord, we shall thank you for it and give you praise and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. The Lord is great. I want you to know that you don't have to get to victory. You already have the victory. Just call on the Lord. Just call on him. Victory belongs to you. I love you with the love of Jesus. I miss you all. Have a wonderful day. Good morning to you, Brother Pastor Delbert. You go in peace.